move to football. UNC, they lost this weekend 38-28 to to Georgia Tech. UNC is now 1-7 and seven on the year, 1-5 and five in the conference. For those who didn't see the game, Jace Reuter came in, performed well, 4 or 5, 80 yards, 1 touchdown. Then Nathan Elliott came in, who he hadn't thrown an interception for 6 games, threw 3 in the game, including 2 costly turnovers late. So let's let's ask the question, and, and Jace Reuter got injured, so that's why Nathan Elliott came back into the game. Are the Tar Heel football team, are they cursed or just bad? I mean, <clears throat> I want to say cursed. I think they're just in a bad situation with their QBs. Nathan Elliott definitely hasn't wowed this year. He hasn't he hasn't done as poorly as a lot of people say he has, but that he definitely has not performed the expectations. Um, but I think this team honestly has just not been great. I mean, the defense just did not play well at all yesterday. I mean. How you defend a triple option team was is being disciplined, and I saw a very undisciplined team on the field Saturday. I don't think they're cursed. I think they're just a lot of pieces that have to be put in place that just aren't being put in place right now. Yeah, I mean, I think it's sort of a combination. I think first and foremost, there's some really bad coaching. I don't know how Larry Fedora let Jace Reuter and Cade Fortin sit on the bench for as long as they did. Oh, yeah. You, this makes no sense. Yeah, you could tell that Nathan Elliott and Chaz Surratt, you know, probably after 60 minutes of football that they weren't the quarterbacks of the future, and they probably shouldn't be the quarterbacks now. And you knew the season was sort of a lost season, so I don't know how you sit back and not play Reuter, not play Fortin. But I will say, I think there is part of it that is, that is the team is a little bit cursed here. They've just seen so many injuries over the past two years. And then especially this season, like whenever these, these two young quarterbacks came in, the team performed a lot better. You saw that with Fortin against Virginia Tech. Then he goes out with an injury and he's done for the year. I don't know what the Reuter injury is, if, if he'll be able to play again this season, but there's only three games left, so it probably seems unlikely, but he comes in, he plays great, four or five 80 yards and a touchdown, and then he shows up in a sling after that series. You know, it is unfortunate. Obviously, if, if the coaching could be a little better, they gave up 461 yards and four touchdowns on the ground. You know, you know, just like David said, you, when Georgia Tech comes to town, you know what they're going to do. They're going to run the football down your throat every single play. Um, they they threw the ball twice in the game. and Both of them were just insanely huge gains. Yeah, 104 yards, one touchdown on, on two attempts. Two completions, two attempts. So they didn't even... It doesn't make any sense. They, yeah, I mean, whatever they did, they did extremely well, like ridiculously well. I mean, who runs the ball 74 freaking times? I mean, well, Georgia Tech does. I mean, we all know that's Georgia Tech's game. I just, I'm not understanding how, if you're a coach, you aren't teaching your team to be more disciplined than what I saw. I mean, I I thought that they, that, that at times Carolina looked really good, and then it would just be a mental lapse once every drive that would lead to just a huge gain, just every play, and I... And I, it's just kind of frustrating watching the defense, which I thought was the more talented of the two units at the beginning of the year, just play so poorly all season. Yeah, I mean, I think the offense would be more talented, but the quarterback position has been so bad this year. Yeah. It's also just, I mean, it's crazy looking at the Georgia Tech stats. You have four guys that you look at individually and say, wow, they had a really good game. Oliver, 28 carries, 120 yards, two touchdowns. Cottrell, 9 carries, 90 yards, and a touchdown. Howard, 10 carries for 90, and Marshall had 8 carries for 61. So you guys had, you know, Georgia Tech had four guys that seemingly put up, if you played fantasy football, four pretty good fantasy days, including two really good fantasy days. So that's unacceptable if you have the whole week to prepare and you know exactly what they're going to do. Obviously, Georgia Tech has given North Carolina a lot to worry about in the past, and they came in with the same exact game plan they have against every other team, run the football, 
triple option, run it down your throats, run it, just keep on running it. And they did that successfully. Um, but, but going back to the question, I do think the Tar Heels are a little bit cursed here. Just so many injuries. <laughs> I mean, Carter starts the year injured. We had all the players. They were all suspended. But I don't know if and that's... Surratt, too. I don't know. know if that's cursed so much as just business not being taken care of in the locker room. I mean, if your players are doing things like this, I mean, that's on the coach. I mean, yeah. Michael yeah. Carter being hurt, yeah, that's, that's unfortunate. But, I mean, we still had Antonio Williams and a bunch of other guys on the roster who could at least run the ball. I mean... Nathan Elliott, he's under center for the entirety of the season, and we don't see our two new recruits play until, what, six games into the season? So, I mean, I feel like this isn't so much curse as it is just not a very good football team. Yeah, I mean, I would agree. I think, like, I mean, that's why I sort of see it as a combination. Like, yeah. it's unlikely, like, what team has three quarterbacks come in, play, you know, decent, you know, aside from Surratt, but two out of three come in, play really good football, out for the year. Surratt, also out for the year. So you're left with one out of your four quarterbacks. And, you know, Carter Williams was hurt. They had a lot of injuries last year. Um, but I, I agree. I think this, it's just a lot of poor coaching, a lot of bad decision-making. And, and it's, you're seeing it's just, out on the field and off yeah. the field, too, with the suspensions. It's bad decision-making everywhere. We're so close. Every game is almost like the team puts us in winning position but it's just like there's a couple of things that will throw us off. And you're like, oh, man, we must be cursed. It's, no, we're just not a very good team. I mean, you see the play calling. Every, I mean, there was a lot of times the play calling down the stretch of this Georgia Tech game was atrocious. Syracuse game was even worse. I mean, after you get a pick and you just try and huck the ball down the field several times and a QB draw is just thrown in there. Like, it doesn't make any sense. And then Nathan Elliott, you're like, oh, he's just cursed, man. He threw two picks in the most vital moments of the game, and one was just straight to a defender. Like, I mean, yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't know. It's just, it's just frustrating to watch. I mean, really quickly, this just came into my head. 